So for this project, we're going to be creating sketchbooks. And rather than just keeping this plain cover, we're going to decorate it using the collage method. So when you're done, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. And it's going to take multiple images and pieces of paper that you found and cut and arranged. And you're going to decorate a front and a back cover and have different pages on the inside that you can draw on throughout the course. We're going to use what's called a saddle stitch binding to bind the paper to it and that's going to make for a nice small sketchbook that you can work in. I've created a couple of these over the years and the process is still the same. Collect images, cut them out, arrange them, and then bind your pages to your collage cover. We're going to talk about the steps needed to create this and get you started on your own process. As you prepare your collage sketchbook, you're going to have a decision to make. And that decision is going to be, is my design going to be split between the front and the back cover so that you're doing two separate collages? Or are you going to have a design that spans both the front and back cover and it runs over that binding area? When you make that decision, you're going to want to grab your materials. And for this part of the process, you're going to want to grab your chipboard with the paper that is clipped to it. You're going to want to grab a pencil and a ruler. We're not going to need the paper right now, so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to pull the silver parts of the clip away squeeze down, remove the paper, and then clip it back together. You should have five sheets and you want to keep these together. So I'm going to do the same at the bottom. Flip the clip over, remove it, pull my paper away, and clip it together. I suggest storing this in your manila envelope until you're done with your collage. Now this chipboard is going to be where you place your collage onto. It's a nice consistent color and it's a nice sturdy surface. To create your collage cover, we're going to put a collage either on the front and back or that goes over both sides. Either side will work for your collage. If you want to do this using recycled materials, you can also use things like cereal boxes. For this, I want to kind of plan out where my colors are going to be, so I'm going to divide this in half. You can do this two ways. The first is you can measure it. So you can take your ruler and measure from one end to the other. So I'm just shy of 11 inches. When measuring, always make sure that you line the zero part of your ruler up with the edge to make your measurement. This one is just beyond 10. So it is about 10. It's a little bit farther than 3 quarters, so it's about 10 and 7 eighths, which means that half of that would be 5 and 7 sixteenths. So I would come over and I would find 5 and 7 sixteenths and mark that. Anytime you want to divide something in half, you want to make sure you measure both the top and bottom. They may not be consistent. This is. So I'm going to do 5, 7 sixteenths again, making my mark at the bottom and the top. And I am going to draw my line. And this will give me my front cover and my back cover. And it's good to label these so that you know which side is up and what is there. We can see this if we take one of our other sketchbooks and we open it up. The front cover should be on the right hand side, the back cover should be on the left. Another option that you can have is to fold this. It may be harder to add your collage materials to it when it's folded, but it is a way to start. To do that, you would simply just want to line up both edges, get it as even as possible, and then press down. can flatten it back down when you work. After you set up your sketchbook and you're ready to start your collage for your front and back cover, you're going to want to start finding images. During this process, you may have some ideas about what you want to include. And that's okay. You can explore and try to find those images. Typically, I advise to try to keep yourself open and see what you find and how that works for you. I did not have a plan for this sketchbook cover. I simply found images that I thought were interesting, and then I came up with a way to connect them all. Typically what we want to try to do is fill both the front and the back using either photographs that we found, have taken and printed, or pieces of colored construction paper. To get started, we are going to grab a series of magazines or other images that you can use. For this, I have a variety of magazines and you can see some of them have already had pages torn. The first part of any collage should start with harvesting materials. So what I'm going to do is just flip through the page and look for images that I like. These chairs are actually quite interesting to me. 
So what I'm going to do is just pull that whole page out. I'm going to make a pile off to the side and begin to just collect images that I'm interested in. I already see another one, this girl playing guitar. You don't need to judge or come up with a plan of how you're going to put this together at this time. You just want to start collecting images. So flip through your magazines, find at least five or six images that you're interested in, possibly even more, and then we will start to experiment. So at this point, I've collected a stack of images from my magazines that I found interesting. So what I want to start doing is refining these images and cutting them out from the background. So this image of the trees I'd like to include. So for that, you're going to have a couple options. And the first one is to use the pair of scissors that you have included in your kit. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward. You're just going to find the image and you will carefully remove it from the background. One thing I would suggest is always be cautious when cutting. You can always cut more, but gluing things back together is going to be a little bit more challenging. So usually in my first pass, I tend to leave a little extra so that I can go back in and remove it if need be. This will also be easier to cut once it is removed from the page. If you have multiple images on the page, you're going to want to keep the page. For me, I kind of make a pile of the images I'm going to keep, and then I make a pile of the things that I'm going to get rid of, and I'm going to kind of recycle. So I hang on to that. As you go through, if you have other things that you want to cut that have more detail, you can use the scissors. So I could go in and carefully cut around this gentleman's head. But if you have the resources, you can use a utility or X-Acto blade and a cutting board. Anytime you're using a utility blade, you want to make sure you put a soft surface, whether that's a cutting board or a piece of cardboard or another magazine underneath, so that the blade will go through the object but not onto the surface. I do not want to cut my table. When using this, you want to cut very carefully and keep your other hand that's holding the page out of the way. So I'll go around and just carefully cut these edges again. You can always cut more away later. You do not want to find that you cut too much away at the beginning and that you've got to come back and that part of that image is removed. So after you collect your images, you're going to want to come through and harvest them from the page. Whether that's using a pair of scissors or an X-Acto blade. Just make sure as you're working with these materials that you're being safe, that you're keeping the sharp edges away from your hands, eyes, and other materials and parts of your body that you do not want to cut. And then after you are done, we'll talk about composing your image based on the details you have harvested. So take your time cut out the portion of your images, make a pile of those, and then make a discard pile that you will not use.